Hey guys, welcome back to the Knitting Expert Podcast channel. Um, my name is Mina. If you're new here, welcome. This is primarily, this channel is primarily a uh, knitting podcast channel. I've recently started spinning, so now spinning is part of the mix. I also do some sort of like family vlog style videos as well. But this video isn't a podcast. This video is a spinning vlog. I'm going to start a series of spinning vlogs um, because I've only recently started spinning. It's probably been about a month, maybe just under a month since I started, since I got my wheel. And if you want to hear the story about the wheel and all of that jazz, then um, I will link the video when I first introduced the fact that I was going to be spin learning to spin and um, the whole story behind how I ended up with this wheel will be in that video. And I have a Kromsky Sonata, which was kindly sent to me by Kromsky um, to try out, review, learn to spin, etc. and to share my experiences with you guys. So, I posted a video, I say a video, I posted a photo to Instagram yesterday to ask if you guys would be interested in seeing more spinning vlogs. Um, I wasn't sure how much interest there would be in seeing um, like spinning content from someone who's only just learning to spin, more so than just me talking about it on the podcast. Um, like actually taking you step by step through the process of spinning fiber or from whatever different preparations and how it looks at the end and there was an overwhelming a positive response to that um, people saying yeah it'd be really interesting to see it from a beginner's perspective and a lot of people who commented on also learning to spin and would like to see how I'm doing it and and so give them ideas and ideas and things as well because I'm still very much in the experimenting phase and trying out different fibres, different fibre contents, blends, um, preparations, etc. And just to see what I like, see what my default is. I'm also, I'm already starting to notice and figure out what my default sort of like spin turns out to be. I'm very much a fan of the uh, chain five method. I really like that because there's not, you don't have to worry about trying to um, fill up your bobbins evenly and um, and stuff like that. Uh, I do like a two ply, but so far I, I need to try it again, and I will try it again. But um, I need to try uh, plying from a center pull ball again. The first time I did it, I ended up with a lot of yarn buff, and I think I have a better way of doing it that will hopefully reduce the likelihood of that happening. Anyway, enough blabbering. Let me just show you what I'm working on. So this is the fiber that I uh, posted about yesterday. Uh, today is Monday the 26th of November, so this is the fibre. So it is by a company called Delphi Fibres, uh, they're a UK based um, company. So that's their website, fellviewfibres.co.uk. I will link them below. Um, I can't find them on Instagram. I don't think they have an Instagram presence, so I wasn't able to tag them in the post, but I did, I did hashtag their company thing. So this is um, a set of Rolags. It's the St. Peter's Posy colorway. Um, do you call them colorways when it's fiber? I'm not sure. Um, Rolags slash poonies. It's about 100 grams and the fiber blend is merino, mulberry silk, tassa silk, bamboo and Falkland. Um, so yeah, it's it's really, they are beautiful little nests, not nests, rolls, roll eggs of fibery gorgeousness. So there were actually seven Rolags in this um, little package and um, so what I was originally going to do was just spin it, all seven of them straight and then do a like a center pull ball and uh, ply it back on itself but and I'll show you in a second but this fiber is spinning up really quite fine and um, so <laughs> Quite honestly, I don't want to sit there and wind a center pull ball by hand or even on my ball winder for how fine this yarn is. And I also I'm still concerned because I'm not 100% confident in how well plus a spun my singles are. I don't want to have the risk of it breaking a lot on me because it is so, so fine. Um, so what I'm going to do is I've weighed out the row legs and split it 50-50 a bit more evenly this time <laughs> and I'm going to spin one bobbin like half the fibre on one bobbin and then half on the other bobbin on a second bobbin and then ply them together as a traditional two ply. I think that's called a traditional two ply. I'm still not completely hot on all the spinning terminology so apologies if I say anything incorrectly. Um, so that's what I'm working on at the moment and um, I've spun two of the row legs so far so I have another 
five to go. So two more for this bobbin because one of the right legs was quite light. So two more goes onto the bobbin I'm currently working on and then the rest goes onto a new bobbin. And yeah, I'm gonna just um, show you guys what the current yarn looks like. So this is where we're at at the moment. I'm really chuffed with how this is spinning up. You can see here it's really quite fine. And for the majority of it, it is this fine. There are bits that are actually a bit finer than that. There are bits that are a little bit thicker. I do certainly get, I'm not super consistent yet. There are bits that are still a bit more lumpy, but it's very much, I mean, this you can see here, this, this ply here is a bit on the thicker side. But overall, I'm very chuffed with how even and how um, how even it's coming out. And also, um, if you can see, I'm also quite happy with how well I'm loading this bobbin quite evenly as well. There's not too many little peaks on it. But, um, but yeah. All right, so now we're gonna prep this little Rolag for spinning. I finished prepping the rest of the fibres, the rest of the row legs for the second bobbin. These are ready to be spun. The second bobbin is done. I'm quite impressed with how evenly I managed to fill that one up. Um, yeah, I'm pretty chuffed with that. And it's looking pretty even. I mean, it's definitely got some thick and thin bits in it. I think the mix of fibres in this one has meant that um, there was always going to be some little, like, lumpy textured bits in it, which is absolutely fine. I was not going, I was not aiming for perfection. <laughs> Um, I was just looking to have a bit of fun, and I really enjoyed it. And that's what the two bobbins look like, side by side. So this was the first one, and this is the one I just finished. Now, so yeah, they look pretty even-ish. I think this one, the one on um, this one here, the right, Looks like it might have a little bit more fibre on it than the one on the left, but overall I feel like it's fairly balanced. And um, to the thickness as well, again, it looks fairly even between the two bobbins, so fingers crossed this will come out quite nicely. Now I don't think the colours are going to line up because I'm not sure I actually spun all the Rolex going the right way um, in terms of the colour changes. And I don't think they were all exactly the same either in terms of um, where the colours were in the Rolex. So we will see how this turns out. It might just look a complete mess um, as a two-ply, or it might look fine. So this is going to be interesting to see how this looks. I think it's going to look pretty crazy colour-wise because there is a lot of colour in this. Um, 
and I'm starting to think maybe I should have done this one as a chain ply. I'm not sure. Um, I'm going to sleep on it anyway. I'm not going to do this. I'm going to apply it tonight. You should always, what I've heard anyways, that you're supposed to let your singles rest for at least 24 hours. And well, this one has been resting for over 24 hours now, but um, I'm going to leave this until tomorrow and have a sleep on it and think about what I'm going to do. I feel like if I if I chain ply it, it will keep the colours together and um, probably give more of like a self-striping sort of fun gradient effect. Um, but as a two ply, I'm just worried that it's going to be really muddied and really crazy, and whether it will whether it will be usable as yarn or not. You know what? I think I might post on Instagram and see what you guys think. It's the next day. And um, as I mentioned uh, last night when I finished recording, I couldn't decide what to do with the yarn, whether to chain ply it um, on itself or to stick with the two ply, which was what I was originally planning on doing with this. So I posted a poll on Instagram and it seems that the majority of you are suggesting I should chain ply it. Get that there. So the majority seem to suggest chain plying has been the best option, um, like two thirds and then a third are saying to uh, two ply it. I had a few people message me and this was also an idea I'd considered but ruled out, which I'll explain why in a second. But some people had messaged me saying, why don't I ply it um, with a commercial sort of neutral yarn or a hand spun neutral yarn. Um, for one thing, I don't have any commercial yarn that would be suitable. And secondly, I don't have any hand spun that would be suitable either. And also I don't have enough bobbins to uh, spin up some neutral yarn anyway to then ply these together. And I, the, these have spun up quite fine. I have no idea how much yardage is on here, but I really don't want to spend ages winding these off the bobbin. So I just didn't want to have to deal with that. So for right now, that's not what I'm going to do. And um, it wasn't really what I wanted for this spin anyway. I wanted to keep it nice and colourful. I didn't want to mute it down with a neutral colour. And then um, a couple of other people suggested that why don't I just try two plying it and basically do a little bit, see how it looks. If I like how it's looking, then I continue. And if not, I can stop and then I can still chain ply the rest and um, I won't have lost much in the way of the yardage. So I think, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I really had my heart set on two plying this, this uh, fiber. So, um, especially because it came out so fine, I wanted to maximize the yardage on it compared to um, when you chain ply it. So, I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to try the two ply. Um, I'll do a little bit and see how it's looking. If it starts to look a little bit muddy or looks a little bit too crazy, then I will stop and just leave that as a little sample and, um, and then chain ply the rest. So, here goes. So I've spun up a fair bit actually in the two ply so far. I'm not sure how well you can see that there. Um, and I don't mind how it's how it's spinning up. I actually quite like it. Um, I personally really like bubble polling in hand spun. I think it kind of adds to it, and I is one of the aspects of hand spun that I really like. So I think I'm going to continue and finish this off as a two ply, which was what I originally wanted to do, and that's kind of why I was leaning more towards it. Um, and it doesn't look as sort of like muddy did it or like as crazy as I thought it might look. It actually works quite nicely and I, I really like how it's looking. Um, even though the majority have suggested chain plying it, I have done a lot of chain plying recently and there are a few other bits of fibre that I want to spin up that will be chain plied. But I really wanted to do this one as a two ply and having started it out like that, I kind of, I like where it's going. So I am going to carry on and see what this looks like finished. I will say I will more than likely knit this up with a um, more neutral or um, a s single coloured yarn with it, so either in stripes or some other kind of um, way of combining the two, probably not held together, but 
um, probably something to kind of like mute it down just a little bit so it's not super crazy on its own in a project. But, um, but yeah, that's kind of where my head's at with that right now. finished that two ply pretty chuffed with how this has turned out actually it's not as crazy well it is crazy colors but um i always knew that from the rolex but it's not as muddied as i was worried it might turned out might have turned out to be but yeah looking forward to see how that looks all skinned up which i will do in a minute but um there was a little bit left on one of the bobbins which always seems to be the case and that's why it doesn't look like there's all that much left on there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to practice um, plying from a centre pull ball. So I'm going to wind that off into a centre pull ball and uh, two ply the rest of that. And um, yeah, I'll show you how that goes. That's what this looks like, all wound up onto the nitty noddy. I'm struggling to keep it on here, it keeps wanting to slide off the edges. Um, but yeah, I'll give you a little close up. The lighting's a bit funny right now because my computer's on, and for some reason, we've not got focus. There we go. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a blue cast at the moment because of the computer, but get a vague idea of what that looks like so yeah I'm just gonna count the wraps and see how long this is how much yardage there is and then I'm gonna finish tying it off and go give it a soak all right so this is how it's hanging straight off the nitty noddy it's definitely the largest skein I've ever spun so far in terms of yardage um, I haven't done the calculations yet to see what the actual yardage is, but in terms of the number of wraps. But yeah, I'm going to two ply the rest of that leftover bit and then um, wind that off and soak them both and hang them up to dry. There's definitely parts of this that I feel are a little bit underspun, like there. And there are other parts that are probably a little bit overspun. But overall, like it feels really soft as it is. Like it doesn't feel ropey at all, which is nice. And um, I guess I'd rather it be a little bit underspun than totally overspun and ropey. And yeah, like it's got zero twist left in it. Like it's just hangs. So so yeah, it'd be interesting to, interesting to see how this is um, once it's been soaked. So this is what the skeins look like hung up. Yeah, I'm just like really quite chuffed with how these have turned out. It's just a little mini of it. I think this is less than 10 grams. It's like seven or eight grams, I think, that was left on the bobbin. So yeah, there's that. And so this is what it looks like, all finished. And wound up, so this is a little mini that went with it. It's still slightly damp, but I'm going to be recording a podcast later, so I just wanted it wound up, and then I'll unwind it and leave it to hang to finish drying. I've added a little tag to it. How cute is this? Um, I realise I need to start tagging my hand spun, otherwise I'm going to forget all the details. I am taking notes of everything in a notebook, but it's just um, 
nice to have the information on the actual skein itself that way if I want to work with something I can just check the information on there straight away so all I've included is the dyer um, the name of the colorway for the Rolex and that it was Rolex uh, fiber content and then yardage information and weight um, I didn't put what weight of like yarn it is like fingering sport or whatever because this one actually varies a little bit it is probably majority fingering to sport I think is kind of how it's worked up in the end and as you can see I got quite a lot of yardage on this one um, I got about 443 yards total between 420 in the main skein and 384 meters or 20 and 23 yards or 21 meters for the little mini so overall I have over 400 meters of um, fan spun here which is pretty awesome so I think I mentioned it already but I'm thinking of pairing this with a um, like a more solid color or tonal and maybe knit something for Layla um, maybe a jumper or something a pullover I think this would be quite nice it's like, and like striped with a like a solid um, just something really simple to let the colors just do their thing as it were so um, so yeah I haven't decided what this is going to be um, maybe some colour worky. I, I have no idea. I haven't decided yet, but probably something for Layla. I think is what this will turn into eventually. So the tags, if anyone's interested, I kind of just made these myself. I got some um, like these little craft paper uh, sets from like the pound shop, quite literally, and they had like a Christmas range out, which is really cute. There were these little. Uh, they have a few other patterns, but they're basically these knit stitches. Um, in like different sort of patterns so this one was reindeers and I just cut one sheet it was like a six by six square I cut it up into squares um, small squares so I had like nine tags from one sheet and just attached it on with some scrap yarn like that's literally all it is um, and I've tagged my other hand spun as well so it's all sat in a basket ready for podcasting later so yeah that's um, I guess that's the end of this one thank you for joining me for this vlog I hope you enjoyed it and um and yeah, I think for the next month or so, for the month of December anyway, I'm not going to do any standalone spinning vlogs because I am doing Vlogmas. So any spinning that I do will be shown on Vlogmas. And it seems a little bit superfluous to have um, a separate spinning vlog as well as I'd be showing you the same stuff. Um, so I think for the month of December, any spinning that I do will just be part of Vlogmas. Same with my knitting. I'm not planning on podcasting during December. So um so yeah, back in Jan once we get to January, I will start spinning some more, and I think maybe I'll do um, a few more like interactive things, asking you guys to pick what you want me to spin next, or what you want to be the subject of the next spinning vlog, or stuff you might want me to try out. I know you guys, the majority of people, like two thirds, voted for me to chain ply this, and I went ahead with the two ply, but I think that was mainly because the two ply was what I originally wanted to do in the first place, and I'm actually really happy that I did. I'm really happy I did that. Um, it was a fun experiment and um, that's what this is all about. Alright, take care and I'll see you guys soon.